Ni hao ma. That's all I learned. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Shay Shay, everybody. Um, I, my name is Sylvia, and it's about my mother, so this is the background I grew up in. Uh, a movie in the making, Hollywood into Bollywood. The 16 millimeter projector is running. A white sheet covers our wood-burning fireplace, now becoming a screen. I watch my mother's story begin to unfold before my very eyes. Born in Tibet, high in the mountains, my mother looked Eurasian. She was beautiful beyond words, tall, slim, light-skinned, and almond eyes. Beauty, looks, intelligent, she had it all. Men were drawn to her and women were jealous. Her proud statue created an aura. She had the look of Vogue, a style beyond her years. The moment my, mom's, my father saw my mother, he fell in love with her. She was then married to a much older man, an arranged marriage at a very young age. Soon after, however, her husband was crushed under lumber. Suspicious was the word. The East Indian community decided that as an immigrant on her own with no relatives or support, my mother should marry my father. He was a widower. His wife had died of tuberculosis. Born in northern India, he was tall, handsome, and suave, and he was charismatic. Clean shaven, wore exquisite western clothing, suits, a top hat, spats, covered his shoes on rainy days. Creative and intelligent, he could make $100 from a $1 bill. Owning trucks, wood businesses, taxi stands, rooming houses, and a nightclub. He never worked, he employed. My parents were Brahmin, considered the highest class in the caste system in India. In Vancouver with a modern dad, we grew up with music and movies, Hollywood movies. We were different, we stood out in the East Indian community. My father loved Sinatra and had a passion for, for Hawaiian music. He learned to play the ukulele, set up his own studio, and registered my brother and sister into guitar lessons. Soon they became known as Vancouver Bobby Sockers, performing at the Vancouver Hotel, community centers, auditioning, and were asked to go to Hollywood. Money to be made in music and movie industry, our dad became a Hollywood promoter. As the good life continued, he socialized with judges in the British properties, with government officials, making prominent connections. Family life started changing with our dad being in Chinatown. He, was mahjong. he loved mahjong and um, gambling most of the time or in his nightclub located at Kiefer in Maine. His colorful life brought in corruption and the mafia. He became known as the Hindu godfather. A heavy gambler, stakes were high, losing our Chilliwack farm to a gambling debt. As the high life spiraled downward in 1947, his temper escalated, physically and mentally abusing our mother. Our mother was admitted into the psychiatric ward in, Vic in Victoria Hospital with severe depression, receiving shock treatments. She returned home a different person with little emotion. Her laughter and beautiful smile disappeared. My father's swing, uh, mood swings got worse. His rage would erupt at any time. Violence continued. She knew she had to leave, but how with no income? She started pocketing money he gave her for groceries and clothes, went through his pant pockets, taking from his winnings, hoping he would not notice she was planning her escape. He was oblivious. It was the year 1949, a summer afternoon, a fight erupted in the hallway of our home on 10th Avenue. I remember my father threatening my mother with a gun to sign over the deed to our home for another gambling debt. He started beating her when she refused. My brother and sister were yelling and screaming, trying to stop him. As young as I was, I tried to reach a telephone receiver mounted on the kitchen with the up wall for the operator, the police, or someone, anyone, to come and save my mother. It was all a blur. It seemed forever before the police arrived. Fearing for her life, our mother took us into hiding, telling no one where she was. She knew this was the end of her marriage. It was only days later when we boarded the Greyhound bus headed for San Francisco, hidden in her purse, third-class tickets on the General Gordon warship, destination India. I heard that my father searched for my mother, even though he knew she was never coming back. He had lost her and his family forever. We lived in Simla for a year, a city high in the Himalayan mountains. It was where my mother had a vision to import movies to entertain Vancouver's 
East Indian community. She started by negotiating with major film industries in Bombay. Knowing Vancouver's Sikh community was growing with no source of entertainment, her plan was forming. Bollywood became an important part of our life once we moved back to Vancouver. We would lie on our bed in the dining room, watching 16 millimeter movies our mother imported from India. As much as we hated East Indian movies, Bollywood became our entertainment and our income. Mom spoke many languages, but her English was limited. I remember drafting letters, typing out on Smith Corona typewriter, typing, trying to translate Punjabi into English, lost in translation. translation. Over the years, she corresponded with the numerous film companies in Pakistan and India, even Hollywood, negotiated with halls and theaters across North America, scheduling dates to show the Bollywood movies to the East Indian community. We became her assistants, typing letters, tracing and mailing her out flyers, selling tickets at box offices, driving her to appointments. All the while, she would network in the East Indian community. This was the beginning of Bollywood in Vancouver. It began with, began with my mother's dream, wanting her children to have a better life to be Canadian. As I get older, I am in awe of my mother's vision and determination to become independent against all odds. The images on screen above the fireplace fade as I see my mother become the first person and only woman to bring Bollywood films to North America, entertaining the East Indian community from 1950 to 68. Thank you, everybody. This is a picture of my mother. Thank you. Thank you.